Carbon dioxide in air is normally measured in parts per million or ppm. At 1,000 ppm of carbon dioxide, a volume of air containing 1 million air molecules would contain a mixture of 999,000 air molecules and 1,000 carbon dioxide or CO2 molecules. The volume of air necessary to contain one million air molecules is affected by air pressure. As the pressure increases, the volume needed to contain one million air molecules decreases. Although the volume decreases, the concentration of CO2 is not affected. If you started with 1,000 ppm of CO2, then you finish with 1,000 ppm of CO2, despite the change in the air volume. Air volume is also affected by temperature. As the temperature decreases, the volume of air needed to contain one million molecules also decreases. Again, the concentration of CO2 is not affected by the change in volume. CO2 concentration in the air is important because many buildings use this concentration for what is called demand-controlled ventilation. In this type of ventilation, the amount of fresh air brought into a room is controlled by the concentration of CO2 in the room. Because people exhale CO2 when they breathe, the concentration of CO2 in a room will increase or decrease in direct proportion to the number of people in the room. Therefore, utility costs can be lowered by only bringing in fresh air when people are in the room and the concentration of CO2 increases. Most CO2 sensors used for demand control ventilation are known by the engineering term non-dispersive infrared or NDIR. An NDIR sensor shines infrared light through an air in a sample chamber to a photo detector on the other side. CO2 molecules are opaque to 4.26 micron infrared light while the rest of the air molecules are not. So the intensity of the infrared light is diminished proportionally to the number of CO2 molecules in the sample chamber. Measuring the resultant light intensity measures the number of CO2 molecules present. The size of the sensor's sampling chamber is fixed. Therefore, the volume of air in the sampling chamber is always the same. As explained earlier, though, the number of air molecules in this fixed volume does not stay the same because it is affected by temperature and pressure. Let's use air with a CO2 concentration of 1,000 ppm as an example. At high pressure or low temperature, there are more air molecules in the sensor's sample chamber so there will also be more CO2 molecules, even though the concentration of CO2 hasn't changed. More CO2 molecules fools the sensor into thinking that the CO2 concentration is higher than it really is. At low pressure or high temperatures, there are fewer air molecules in the sample chamber and less CO2 molecules, even though the concentration of CO2 hasn't changed. Less CO2 molecules fools the sensor into thinking that the CO2 concentration is lower than it really is. Applying this principle to the real world, air pressure, also known as barometric pressure, is directly affected by altitude. So a CO2 sensor reading 1,000 ppm on a 77 degree Fahrenheit day in New Orleans, Louisiana, which is at approximately sea level, would read only 832 ppm on a 77 degree Fahrenheit day in Albuquerque, New Mexico, which is at approximately 5,000 feet above sea level. This difference of 168 ppm is over twice the 75 ppm specified accuracy of most NDIR CO2 sensors. Besides altitude, barometric pressure is directly affected by weather patterns. Looking at southwestern Wisconsin, where the BAPI facility is located, Barometric pressure changes from weather patterns on a single day in 2005 would cause a 35 ppm fluctuation in CO2 sensor readings from 1,029 ppm to 954 ppm. This is almost 50% of the specified accuracy of most CO2 sensors. Applying real-world temperatures to this principle, a CO2 sensor reading 1,000 ppm on a 77 degree Fahrenheit day would read 1,092 ppm at 32 degrees Fahrenheit, and it would read 976 ppm at 90 degrees Fahrenheit. That's a 116 ppm swing, well over the 75 ppm specified accuracy of most NDIR CO2 sensors. And these three factors, altitude, weather, and temperature, can work in combination, further increasing or decreasing the error in the CO2 sensor reading from the actual CO2 concentration. What do these errors in CO2 sensor readings mean to people in a building? 
As stated earlier, many buildings use CO2 sensors to control the amount of fresh air that is brought into a space. Errors in the sensor reading can lead to less than adequate fresh air coming into the space, with the resultant drop in the comfort level and production level of the occupants. Sensor errors can also result in too much fresh air being brought into a space, wasting energy and money. Therefore, accurate CO2 measurement is very important, and the only way to get an accurate measurement with an NDIR sensor is through temperature and barometric pressure compensation. That's why all BAPI CO2 sensors have a built-in barometric pressure sensor and temperature sensor, and each CO2 measurement is automatically compensated based on the current pressure and temperature. This makes the BAPI sensor one of the most accurate CO2 sensors in the HVAC industry and one that you can rely on for demand-controlled ventilation. For more information about our CO2 sensor, check out the white papers and videos on our website at bapihvac.com or give us a call at 1-608-735-4800 to find out how BAPI can enhance your next DDC installation.